All right, I'm up to and is getting ready to talk about accelerating systems. But I'm going to put a pin in that one and jump around a little bit because I know where you need the most help right now trying to get through your orals in lecture. So let's talk about mixture control systems. All right, so the Stromberg is different than all of the other carburetors. The other carburetors are actually quite simple in that, I guess we can start with something simple. There is a valve that is just put in line in series with the main metering jet. So the main metering jet is really designed to limit the maximum amount of fuel that can flow at wide open throttle. Anything other than that is going to have less fuel flowing, and so it really doesn't restrict it as much because that's just the way fluids work. But as we climb in altitude, we need to restrict the fuel coming out of the fuel nozzle a little bit more than what the main metering jet can do because that's really set up for more of a, a sea level operation. So quite honestly, all you have to do, I'll make a representation like this, let me see, is just put some sort of device that you can raise and lower, or in the case of a Marvel Shoveler, really it's a rotating, um, it's got like a opening like that, and then a, another one that can kind of you just open like that, a valve. So you just put a valve down here. I'm not sure I'd want to draw that little valve, but you put a little valve down here and just run a little, you know, run it up to here and we'll put a little lever on it. That lever, just move it back and forth. And if you really want to think about it, all the pilot is doing is pushing forward on the mixture, which pushes a cable, which has a little arm that just rotates. Is that that or a phone? <laughs> About that, okay. Um, and so you're just closing off the mixture, uh, not closing off the mixture, you're closing off the main metering jet just a little tiny bit, making that main metering jet in effect a little bit smaller. Of course, the main metering jet stays the same size. You just close the passage off a little bit. Less fuel flows through here. And you can continue to pull it and pull it and pull it. And it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it blocks off all of the fuel. Now, when it blocks off all of the fuel, we call that idle, idle cutoff. But it works all the time. In fact, I was flying this weekend. I think I made my son poop his pants because he was just staring out the window and I'm screwing around with the mixture and I pulled it back too far and killed the engine in flight. And I'm like, I just push it back in and it starts right back up. But So it'll, it'll kill the airplane at any RPM. We call it idle cutoff because that's where we pull it. So if the carburetor is set up correctly, meaning idle speed, idle mixture, or more appropriately, idle mixture. If it's set up correctly for idle mixture, and I pull the red knob out, the idle cutoff, all the way back, what should I see? I will see a rise of RPM of approximately 50 to 75 RPM, and then it dies. You have to watch closely and you have to listen carefully because it doesn't go real slow. It goes near. It's like, whoa, that was quick. And then it died. And so that is just, that's how Marvel Shubler runs all of their mixture controls that I can think of off the top of my head right now. There's just a valve down here that we close off. And when you push the mixture all the way in at full rich, it pretty much just takes the valve out of the way and fuel flows and the main metering jet does all the metering. So the valve is actually useful and I mean, you're, it's pretty good at shutting off fuel. Uh, I don't ever, most people with a Marvel Shoveler never turn their fuel valve off in the aircraft because all aircraft have a fuel valve to shut off fuel. We don't do it when we park. Just pull the idle mix back, it'll shut it off right here and that works well enough between here and the seat. That is really annoying, why is it doing that today? Well, the fan is 
Yeah, Quinn, some student's like, well, here's your problem. And pulled it out. It was like a nasty cartridge in there. So. Was that paragraph three? Uh, yeah, that's in the appendix, really. It's one of the. Uh... <laughs> okay, so that's that's how Marvel Shubler is going to do it. Very simple. It's just a valve system. I wonder if I have a picture of that. Nope. Nope. Well, that's the carburetor. That's it right there. So that's pretty much it right there. So you can see there's a main metering jet. I just put it in a different spot. Fuel goes through here, out of the float bowl. No effect. Move it towards, uh, well, towards lean. This comes around, blocks that off a little bit. There we go. And the rest of them are too hard to see. Okay. Got it? Just for the barber. If the valve is just two pieces of metal, there's no yeah. barber seal. Or nope. Or nope. Seal back there. Nope. It's actually, it for sits which? in this way. All right. For which one? Marble Shepler. Yeah, that's just two pieces. One rotates like this, and the other one's stationary. Now, while I'm talking about this, and I'm sure this would be a test question, it's certainly an oral question. So it's got, in the carburetor, the sleeve actually sits this way, vertically, with the hole in it. And then you actually drop in the rod that turns this way. And that rod is on speedometer cable, which you would understand. It's a flexible shaft. And so a lot of times when mechanics put these together, it goes like that. And then you pull the mixture, and it's kind of over here, over here, over here. So you put the carburetor together, you put it on the aircraft, and you run it up, and you pull the idle cut off, and it just keeps on running. How come it just kept on running? Because the valve's over here. It didn't get it in the hole. Actually, it's really hard. You just got to get it started. You got to look down in there and then put it in. And then when I built carburetors, then I'd actually uh, blow on it. And if it's quiet enough, you can move it. You can hear the air change difference in it. So that's really important. All right, so we got that one. Now, the Stromberg, totally different. Very, very different. Let's see if I can do this. All right, so first of all, we're going to uh, we'll make a chamber off. We just got to put it way up here so we can kind of see what's going on. Bring that up there. And then we'll bring another one right here. All right, so we got two vent lines in the Stromberg. We have one vent line right here, and we'll call this suction. <clears throat> suction. Why is it suction? Well, because it's over here, just above the Venturi. And then we've got another one color red because that's what I got which is behind the venturi literally which is ambient so it's not pressure it's just ambient pressure not any sort of extra pressure and it runs up to and I'm not gonna be able to draw this very well <clears throat> so I won't kind of a mixing valve if you will so we'll just put a square right there and then out of that mixing valve come out and go into the float chamber. Hopefully you follow me so far. It's also a nice picture you printed out for us too. Oh yeah, it's a lot nicer there. <laughs> it's a lot nicer up there. And there's some rotating discs up here in the little mixing valve, which I won't be able to draw for you, but there's these little discs in here, have little holes in them and the holes line up and such, and it just doesn't work the way I, I drew it. You can look at your, your drawing I handed you and kind of reference that, which I didn't draw. All right, then, so. I was saying the manual of the exploded view has the pictures of the discs. It does. Holes. In the, yeah, in the overhaul manual, it shows the actual. Yeah, if we were. but here's the fun part, not fun. Everybody fixates on the holes. And this is how I ask, how does it work? Oh, Kevin, let me tell you how it works. When the big holes are lined up, it's rich. And when the little holes are lined up, it's lean. Well, how, why? I don't know why. I just tell you that much. Okay, I got to know why. 
the fact that the big holes line up is rich and the little holes line up, okay, that's wonderful, but you gotta understand why. So I'm telling you the why here, which is why I'm not focusing in on little holes, but thank you, that's very good. So just thought I'd mention that. All right, so number one, suction. If this is an idle right now, which it is with the throttle valve, how much suction is right here between the throttle valve and the discharge nozzle? None. None. It's pretty, yeah, not much. It's extremely, no, almost no suction whatsoever. So how much suction do I have in this line right here? Pretty much nothing. So if I have no suction, do you think this is going to work? Okay, it doesn't work in idle because this tube is down here. So number one, doesn't work in idle, which is how Stromberg gets its bad reputation. Everybody says the mixture is crap and it doesn't work. It's because they don't understand it. So if I'm running the carburetor at idle and I pull the mixture all the way back, will it die? No, because it doesn't work at idle. Follow? Okay, so you gotta get that, that number one. Stromberg mixture control, manual mixture control does not work at idle because there's no suction to make it work. It's a back suction type. All right, so when I open the throttle up and I'm operating it, now we've got suction in here. Not a heck of a lot, um, depending if we're wide open, it's gonna be about one inch of suction maybe. Manifold pressure is about one inch less than atmospheric, but it's some and it's enough. So do we remember what is fuel metering force? What's the definition? Between the fuel and the venturing. The what, say, fuel the, chamber and the venturing. say the whole thing. The difference between the pressure of the fuel chamber and the venturing. What pressure? Air. That's very important. The pressure of what? Air. Air. So fuel metering force is the difference in air pressure between the top of the carburetor float bowl to the air right here at the discharge nozzle, okay? Fuel metering force, difference in pressure there. If the pressure in the float bowl is exactly the same as it is at the Venturi, how much fuel will flow? None. None, okay. If I hook up shop air and blow 110 PSI in the top of the float bowl, how much, how much fuel is going to come out? Yeah, well, actually, it'll probably just crush the float. I, actually, I know it will. I've done that. Um, <laughs> that's a funny story. So um, the more pressure you have on top of the float bowl, the, uh, the, the, better, the more the differential between it, the more fuel is going to flow. The less the differential, less fuel is going to flow. So since this red right now is it's just ambient or it's not any sort of ram air pressure or high pressure it's just what's around and if a good place to find it was behind the venturi so in this particular case let's see if we block this off we'll block that off then we've got just red coming down in here and so the chamber up here of the float bowl is red which is just higher pressure ambient pressure surrounding air pressure and the, the pressure over here to the venturi is going to be what it's going to be based upon the throttle position that's not going to change unless you change the throttle okay so now we want a little bit of we're going to lean it out a little bit all right so in order to lean it out a little bit what we're going to do is we are going to allow a little bit of this suction. We're gonna have those holes, the big holes line up. Okay, now we're gonna kind of change the, move the holes around a little bit and we're gonna allow some of this suction right here to pull some of that red out with it. So it's kind of weird how I'm gonna have to draw it. But we've got the red coming up this way. If you wanna think about it this way, the ambient pressure is being pulled up this way. And a minute ago, 100% of that red went this way into the float bowl. But now, I'm stealing some of it. So some of it's going to go this way and out, because this is suction, has to go that way. So I'm going to steal some of that red, and it's got to come around this way, 
and it's going to go out that way. So when I did that, what happened to the pressure in the float bowl? Went down a little bit. So if that goes down a little bit, it got closer to the pressure here at the Venturi, so the carburetor ran, ran leaner. Now, believe it or not, we could actually get to a point by sliding those little discs. That's how we can control it. A little more suction, a little less suction. We can get to a point where we can suck all of the red out, pretty much. And then what happens to the carburetor? It'll quit. Because if we equalize the pressure over here, to equalize over here, then the carburetor no longer has fuel flowing, and it dies. That would be pulling the mixture all the way. Yeah. And it'll, it'll kill it. Will it kill it at idle? Why won't it kill it at idle? Because it, it doesn't work at idle. Why doesn't it work at idle? Because, no because there's no suction. The suction is, sorry, below the throttle plate. It's above it for you. Uh, but it's below the throttle plate. Or above. Um, so it doesn't work that way. So then the question becomes, we go circle back around. We have idle mixture, and what is idle mixture? A properly set carburetor idle mixture, when we pull the idle cutoff, should rise. 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 So this carburetor, now the, the Stromberg, I pull it back, and it what? Does nothing. does nothing. All day it does nothing, because it doesn't work, it doesn't work at idle, because there's no suction. So then how exactly are you ever going to set the idle mixture on this carburetor? Give it a little throttle. What? Give it a little throttle. And then what? Well, and then lean it all the way out and have it down. Gave it a little throttle. Now you're no longer in the idle circuit. You're? In the off-idle circuit. Off-idle circuit. So that doesn't help you set the idle. It's got to stay in idle to set idle circuit. Idle cutoff. That's when you were talking about setting the throttle in the cockpit, locking it at idle, and then unscrewing the idle speed all the way? No. Nope. Do you increase the idle speed to a point where the mixture would work? Then you're off, that, idle. Then you're off idle. No, but like, like when you increase the idle speed, it just opens the, up the throttle valve, right? Now you're not on idle anymore. By the time you get it open enough to get enough suction here to make it work, you're not an idle anymore. So the only thing you can do is adjust the idle mixture? What's that? Well, the only thing you can do is adjust the idle mixture? Well, you can adjust idle speed and idle mixture, but how do you know when the idle mixture is right? When you have it off. When it works. <laughs> Damn near the right answer. When it works. Okay. So what do we do in the field? We screw it all the way in gently and back it out. One and a half turns and see how it works. Well, what does see how it works means? Start it up. Does it feel okay? Feels okay. Add some throttle. Did it take the throttle okay? Took the throttle okay. Pull it back. Pull back okay? Yeah. Well, then that's good. You're done. Go fly it. If the customer comes back and says, man, I got this problem, man. I, you know, I, out at McClellan, I do a lot of taxing. It's it, my spark plugs are always fouling up. Screwed in a little bit. <laughs> all right, that's really about all you can do. Now, if you really, really want to do it, you can, and this is how you're going to do it. Some in the cockpit's going to start it up, warm it up. They're going to sit in the cockpit. You're going to go out to the carburetor, and you have to talk to the. I've never done it. Um, on an actual airplane because I won't because you're right next to the prop and it's not worth it but what you would do is you could take the uh, the mixture needle and you could screw it in until the RPM started to decrease am I rich or lean? lean okay it's just a point to start I now know I'm on the lean side of things okay now start screwing it out Am I making it rich or lean? Rich. I'm going to back it out and back it out and back it out. And the RPM is going to go up, up, up. And why is the RPM going up? I'm getting closer to best power. It's going to go up, up, up. It's going to stop. And as I screw it out, it's going to start going the other way, which means that I 
I reached best power and then went on the rich side of best power. How far on the rich side of best power should I go? It's about 50 RPMs. Then you're done. Do you guys follow that? Can you talk about when does the part of unscrewing and then screwing in the idle speed, when does that come into play? That's idle speed. Okay, so how can I say this a different way so it makes more sense? When I was doing that, say I got a brand new carburetor in the box and I got to set it up on this airplane. If you didn't know any better and you said, well, it is what it, I'm sure they set it up at the factory, right? You bolt it on, you get in, you start it up, the thing goes to 1,000 RPM. You can't pull it back anymore because this throttle screw is holding it. That's a lesson learned right there. So what do you got to do? Oh, well, you're sitting in an airplane running it. What do you got to do? You got to shut it off. You got to get out. You're like, all right, find a screwdriver. You got to. Were you able to set the mixture at all? No, couldn't do anything. This is for all carburetors, especially if you're actually working on a marble shoveler where you're going to adjust the idle mixture. Follow? Yes. Okay, can't do a dang thing because the stupid idle speed is too high. So why not start by just backing it out and getting it out of the way? It's very frustrating when you go to get in an airplane. I mean, you got to get it all set up. You get in, you're going to start it clear. And you start it up, and the idle's so high that you can't do anything. They just wasted a bunch of time. So you got to shut it off. You got to get out, back the idle down. Why not just back the idle down to start? Just take the screw, back it all the way out so it doesn't affect anything. You follow? Do you? Yeah. Okay. Just, we're mechanics. Get it out of the way. I got work to do. So you can't set the mixture if the idle's too high. Can't set the mixture if the idle's too high. And the idle, where you set the idle is going to affect where the, I'm sorry, where you set the mixture is going to affect the idle. So if you get in and, screw Kevin, I'm going to do idle speed first. So you spend 20 minutes getting that idle speed just perfect. Right? You get in. Oh, man, it's a 1,000. Okay, I'm going to get out, shut everything down, back it out a bit, start it again. Okay, nine, 900, we're getting close. Three, four times, you finally do this. Uh, now it's too low. Now it's too high, right? You take it an hour to set the idle speed. I'm like, oh, man, it is right there, 550. Now let's set the idle mixture. And I pull it back, and I have a 200 RPM rise. <laughs> it's way too rich. So now you got to start messing with that. Well, guess what? You back out the uh, mixture to set the mixture and what did it just do to your idle speed it went up because you went closer to best power it was so rich that it was running slow now as you back the idle mixture out it goes best power best power so now you're pulling back on the throttle trying to slow it down but no you set it at 550 but now it's up at 750 because the mixture is getting better see why you got to do the mixture first yes yeah, get the idle out of the way. Get rid of the stop screw. That's all I'm saying. Get rid of the stop screw. Right. Set, and set. then that's where you lock in and move the tires. Then move in, the stop. In the, con in the cockpit, and you have lots of throttles. Moved. And if you don't understand throttle, see me at break. We'll look at the throttle right there on the simulator. It's a real throttle. And it works just fine. It's got a little lock ring on it. So our test stand should, but it doesn't. So <laughs> you move the throttle where you want it in the cockpit, lock it. It's a little lock ring. It ain't going anywhere. Hey, you're not wrong. It, it, it does. It's called the mixture handle. It's what? It's the mixture, the mixture handle. handle. Keeps it, yeah, it's the safety. <laughs> that definitely locks it back in place. <laughs> All right. So the, and I'm, and I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's, it's really what you're going to do as a mechanic. If you ever work on general aviation, this, you've got to get this down. It'd be embarrassing for you if they're like, yeah, go with just idle speed, idle mixture. I'm like, I don't know how. There's only two things you can adjust on it, idle speed, idle mixture, and you don't know how. Well, that's not good. So, all right. So, Stromberg's. Um, when aircraft came out of the factory and they were being sold, the mixture was an option. You had to pay extra for it. I think now 25, 30 bucks, you know. And if you didn't buy the option, and I've worked on a lot of planes that didn't, 
You look under the cowling, you look down at the carburetor, it's got the mixture on it. It's safety wired to the full rich position. You didn't bother putting it in. And like I said, you talk to people and they say, well, the mixture doesn't work anyway. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put this carburetor on the ground power unit and you're going to run the ground power unit and you're going to adjust the idle speed and idle mixture because you can. You're sitting right there with the carburetor there and there's no propeller and it's a little noisy, but because this is, I'm going to confuse some people, I know it, mm -hmm. because there really isn't a throttle on the ground power unit, you're literally holding this right here and making it go, you have to use this, <laughs> this screw. But it's right there. You don't have to stop it or anything. You just kind of move it in and out where you want it. So on that, you really are going to just set the throttle kind of where you want it. It just makes it easier. And if you want it to go a little faster, screw it in. You want it a little slower, screw it out. It's just right there. It's just what you have to do. But you'll start it up and you're going to run it and we'll lock the throttle in at a particular RPM, say 500. And this is the Stromberg I'm talking about, even though I'm holding a marble. And do exactly what I just told you. You can screw in the mixture until you see the uh, RPM start to drop. Now, our RPM gauge, it's electric, it's a tack generator, it sometimes bounces, but there is a manifold pressure gauge. And the manifold pressure gauge is pretty sensitive. I think it's reading about two inches off, but that doesn't matter. So there's a relationship that you have to understand between the two. If I've locked in the throttle, right, and I'm not moving the throttle, and I start screwing in the mixture until it gets super lean, what's going to happen to the RPM? It's going to drop. Okay, RPM is going to drop. So, write this down so you can. So, all right, so we screw it in. So the RPM, RPM is going to drop because we're going lean. Well, what is the manifold going to do? That's map manifold absolute pressure. It's going to go up. Manifold pressure is kind of the opposite of suction. So if it was a suction gauge, it would have less suction. No vacuum by manifold? Yes, exactly. So as I'm doing that, and the engine is starting to run slower and slower, the manifold pressure will start going up and up because there's less suction. So I find that point. Now I start backing it out, and I find I back it out, and the RPM goes up, 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 and then starts to go the other way. They go back where it is, and it's just peaked out. So peak RPM, we'll call that peak RPM. Peak RPM will be the, um, the map lowest point. In other words, the most suction. So you can do that watching the RPM or you can do it the manifold. Manifold, RPM is going to go up, manifold is going to go down. And then you find that peak and then what are we going to do? Adjust the mixture? We've been adjusting the mixture, so yes. We're doing the mixture now. Okay. So we screwed in the mixture until the RPM went down a little bit. And we did that so that we know we're on the lean side of things. Okay, so. There we go. We did it until we got over here because RPM dropped a little bit. Now we're going to start screwing it back in, which means we're going to go richer until we get to right there. And if we go any richer, it's going to do what? Start dropping, <laughs> RPM will go down. So we're right there. So we're at this point right here. What do we do? Do we screw it in or out or leave it alone? Out. And what does that do? It's going to richen it until we go 50 RPM. Okay, this right here, if you don't understand this, don't even try to do the oral. Don't try. Because you won't make it past. So do what it takes to understand that right there, that concept. Because 
it is the pro it is a practical project you're going to do next where you're actually going to do it in the carburetor then i'm going to come out and i'm going to check it and if it takes you if it's some, if you're out there for an hour and a half i know that you're just pulling knobs and twisting levers hoping just hoping that something happens that makes sense and that i'm going to come out and go oh yeah that's fantastic but so that's about a 20 minute project right there at, at best so all right so we understand mixtures okay hopefully all right let's oops i was actually on the thing i wanted all right so let's switch over to this and Mixture okay. control system. Kevin? Yeah. So, for, so for Take as much time as you need. What's that? So backing up to the air mixture, um, it, it's a, the disc controls the suction, right? The, say it again. I just the, didn't copy. The discs, the discs. The air mixture controls the suction? Yes. Let me see if I have that picture here. Why would I not have that? There it is. Okay, so this is what we're really looking at. This is your, your picture. And so what you can see is that this is the suction channel, which is blue, and our ambient pressure, if you want, yellow, but they, they made it actually lighter yellow for a reason, saying it's a little bit less than ambient because there's a little bit of pull right here still. Um, but that might just confuse you. So what happens when you turn the discs is you're actually shutting down some of the ambient coming in which then allows the suction to be the more prevalent pressure if you will having an effect on the top of the fuel chamber yep yep which will lean it out would be fair to say that in that system Yes, it's fair to say that there is a suction and a large leak. And if we were to fix the leak, then the suction will have an effect on the top of the float bowl, shutting down the carburetor. Absolutely. In your project sheet, one of the things I have you do is go ahead and go to full lean. I forget how I wrote it, but it's some of these carburetors, they don't work as well as they should, but they still work. Go to full, full lean in idle, and you'll see it'll do nothing. Now try and give it some throttle. Just go ahead and do it. It ain't going to work. <laughs> it just kills it. Kills it. Um, that's the most uh, dramatic way, I think. If you go kind of a high, high RPM, which I hate on that little machine, I beg you not to do it. It's just so old. Um, and then try and, and pull your mixture back, and it doesn't work as well as if you... Go lean and then try and give it some throttle. Like, oh, dang, that works. No. Okay. Okay, let's let's uh, do notes on this one. So this is going to be G because we left off at like F or something. I'll have to go back around. Mixture control system. Uh, we need a mixture control because why? Because if altitude increases, the air does what? Air okay. Well, it has less pressure, um, has less density. And it has less temperature. That doesn't really, that goes the opposite way, but that is true. It gets colder. So, let me think. I want to write all this. As altitude increases, we have less air available for combustion. Um, well, maybe we'll do this because it will matter some other time. So, all right, is there a problem? because we have to solve the problem next week. 
uh, the third week. So pr problem one, as altitude increases, again, the density decreases, we have less air available, less air available. for combustion. And the Venturi becomes a bit of a problem for us. We like the Venturi, it's just not that smart. A Venturi works off velocity. Venturi works off of velocity and does not does not compensate for density. All right, remember density is a function of um, altitude and heat. I think this is the easiest way to say it. Uh, here, we're at 75 feet in the summer. Our density altitude can be as much as uh, 3,000, 4,000 feet. So the carburetor doesn't know that, right? The engine sure is going to feel it. The, the air is less dense. It's not getting as much air into the engine. Uh, it's hot. The wings are going to feel it. The prop's going to notice it. But here's the Venturi, just fat, dumb, and happy. Oh, look, all the air coming in. You're going to need this much fuel. Come on in. So it starts dumping fuel in, and now we're overly rich. So the carburetor's not really helping at this point. So we got to lean for that um, carefully. Uh, so Venturi doesn't help. So as the air thins, um, the same amount of air is still being dumped into the carburetor. Oh, sorry, let me try it again. As the air thins, the same amount of fuel is being dumped in the carburetor. So now we have thin air, but the fuel is the same as it was before. So not a good thing. So let me see, as air thins, as air thins, put that quote, thins, uh, the same amount of fuel amount of fuel is still being still being sent to the engine so right I take an airplane out there right now our density altitude is what are we at temperature wise 60. let's see I got 43 on my watch so that more or less than standard day. Colder than standard day. So probably our density altitude is less than 75 feet. So what's that? We're underground. We're in Death Valley. So all right, let's just say that uh, do a run, a power run up on the engine out there, and it's uh, 10 gallons per hour. And Oh, it's going to feel I mean, a lot of power. It's going to be a good day. And um, now let's take it in, in August and three o'clock in the afternoon, do a run up. How many gallons per hour am I going to get? 10, because the Venturi didn't know the difference. So it's still giving me 10 gallons per hour and I don't have, and I have half as much air, I don't know how much air, a lot less air. So the engine's going to be a little rich, not as much power, wasting fuel. So. We have to be able to compensate for that. And of course, that's just an example on the ground. As we climb, it's obvious as we start climbing, no matter what the day is like, we're going to have the air is thinner, thinner, thinner. Um, at 18,000 feet, and I've never been that high on my airplane, an engine needs uh, about one half the amount of fuel. at sea level. So you got to lean. Otherwise, you have just went from 12 to 1 to what, 24 to 1? Ain't going to work. No, other way around. 6 to 1. <laughs> you have more fuel to the air. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So mixture control has two functions. Two functions. One, 
What is it? Uh, to lean when rising in altitude. There we go. Okay. So we'll say adjust. Adjust the mixture to compensate for altitude. And number two. Oh, you got it. You're not even a pilot. I was going to look at these cheap guys over here. Fuel Economize fuel flow at crew settings. Because we don't need all that fuel. Why? My plane burns 18 gallons an hour in a climb out. I think it's really expensive. Eighty. How many? I was gonna say how, how much uh, altitude difference. Yeah, yeah. It depends on where you get it. In, in that climb, how much uh, altitude difference is, is your climb? Like, how, how fast do I climb? No, like how. So on the climb, I mean, right? What's, what's your ceiling? Oh, how high can I go? Or like. I don't usually go four, past fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand. So you use 18 gallons of fuel, you said? Per hour. Per, oh, per hour, okay. How, many, how long does it take to get that climb? To 14? Yeah. Probably about half an hour. Half, okay. <laughs> when you start getting past 10, it starts slowing down a lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, has two functions. Um, my notes right here, I wrote there are three types because I was going over three types, but I think I'm going to just go with two types right now. Because really, there's, we talk about the Stromberg and the Marvel shovel, that's two types. We've got to get into something that we're not even studying. And there's probably, if we want to get into stuff we're not studying, there's probably more than three types. So we'll just kind of make it simple here and uh, kiss, keep it simple and succeed. So type one is the back suction. Back suction. So guess what uses the back suction? Stromberg. Stromberg NAS3, NAS3 uses that. All right, so suction is applied to fuel bowl from, suction is applied to fuel bowl, WL. Uh, it's not really the Venturi, it's between the venturi and the throttle plate, so it applied to fuel bowl from uh, manifold pressure, and that's abbreviated MAP, manifold absolute pressure. So suction is applied to fuel bowl from the manifold pressure uh, from between from between uh, we'll say venturi to throttle plate. Now, if Stromberg would have decided to pick up that suction above the throttle plate, it would actually work at idle because there's always suction up there. In fact, a lot. And if I had to guess, maybe they didn't put it there because at idle, there's so much suction up there, maybe the carburetor wouldn't even work. So you would have to, it would work at idle, but then not work at full throttle. I think it just created more problems. I'm guessing here. Uh, let's see. So when open, uh, float bowl, float bowl, let me see, is vented, is mostly vented to, I'll put mostly, mostly vented to atmosphere. Because there's still a little bit of suction on it, so mostly. And then when closed, when closed, I should specify when closed or lean. There we go, lean. When open, we'll say rich. That makes more sense. Rich versus lean. When lean, um, we see bowl. I don't like what I wrote here. Um, Bowl is subjected to mm, 
more section. Which lowers float bowl pressure. I like that better. Yeah, I gotta update my notes. Um, CDE does not work for idle cutoff. It'll work for full power shut off, cut off probably if you want to do that. So how do we shut off a Stromberg carburetor in the aircraft? Shut off fuel flow and ignition. What's that? Shut off fuel flow and ignition. Shut off fuel flow and ignition. Yes. Turn off the gas valve. Well. Old planes are up here. Turn off the fuel coming out of the tank and wait for a long time because it doesn't use a whole lot of gas at idle. Save me waiting a long time. But you could do that. And in all honesty, you could do idle mixture that way too. Turn off the fuel at the tank and just wait and wait and wait and wait. And then eventually, if the mixture is right, you'll see it. RPM tick up a little bit and then dies as we ran out of fuel. You could. And that would, I tried it once and I lost patience at about three minutes into it. I thought, no, no, no this is going to take too long. So, and then naturally what's going to happen is you're going to be waiting and waiting and waiting, waiting, your watch will beep or something. You go, Look at oh, then it died. And you're like, shit, I missed it. And I'm going to start all over again. So you got to turn the valve back on, drain the fuel, get in the carburetor, prime it, go. All right, number two, uh, other type is the needle type. And that's the Marvel Shubbler. Marvel Shubbler has a lot of different names. I'm just going to call it the Marvel Shubbler. Uh, uses a control valve. Uses a control valve. Um, or I could say uses a valve to control. Control fuel um, to discharge nozzle. I think they work a lot better, a lot more control, um, and does work for idle cutoff. Yes, it does. And let's see, I guess while I'm here, might as well just talk about idle cutoff. I don't know of another carburetor, any other carburetors on anything built past 1947. Oh. Did have to go back before that, before we got into something else. And then honestly, before that, it was just bigger, stronger. <laughs> and now everything's Marvel Shoveler. But most things went to fuel injection, so. All right, uh, idle cutoff, and then we'll take a break. So idle cutoff, the position in which, see, the position in which the mixture control shuts off all fuel to the engine. Shuts off fuel to the engine. Now, just to be clear, in an airplane, you have fuel valves that control the fuel to the carburetor and the idle cutoff that controls fuel internal to the carburetor from the float bowl to the discharge nozzle. Follow? So in the event of a fire, 
you reach down and you, or wherever, you turn off the fuel valve, which shuts off the, and that's on the other side of the firewall, that's on the pilot side of the firewall, stops fuel from going into the engine compartment. And that's on both carburetors? Then it's on every airplane. Okay. Every, every airplane. airplane, no matter what the fuel system is, you gotta have a shut off, okay. all of them. Some airplanes, um, like, okay, my 182 has an off, right, left, both. Uh, the 150 has two tanks that it has on off. That's all it had, so they, they both feed at the same time. It's both, um, what do you have? Left right, left, right, off. It's a Grumman half. Left, right, off. Left, right, off. The Cessna 140, um, I don't remember anymore since long as I flew it. I think it was on the floor. It was, uh, um, I think it had individual ones. You'd shut off one. It had right, left, off. Right, left, and off. He never, it had no both. Um, some of them have it up in the wings. So anyway, it's all different. Okay, it shuts off. Uh, and why do we want to shut it off this way? Because I have to laugh, because all my time is pretty much in a Cessna 140 with a Stromberg. And then when I bought the 150 um, with Joe, um, he's a CFI and so I hadn't flown for a long time. So, you know, buy into the airplane. It's like, hey, he's gonna check me out in it. You know, we went flying. I hadn't flown like, you know, 10 years. I did a great job, I thought. Um, you know, we land and I reach over and hit the key. He's like, why did you just do that? And I'm like, I'm just used to the 140. Because different carburetors, this one you, so that's the 150, you pull back on the mixture, and it matters. So why would I do that? So it's safer. Safer to, in a way, safer to use than ignition. Um, I do like to test the key in a plane I don't know. Go, when I'm running it, go to off, make sure the engine's gonna die, go back to both, then pull back the mixture. Um, but as a mechanic, uh, working around the airplane, I wanna pull the mixture, and uh, it's uh, safer to use because all fuel is used. You don't have any fuel in the cylinders. You've just starved it. In fact, when I'm going to work on an airplane and I pull the mixture and as it's dying, I jam the throttle all the way forward. Open up that throttle and it lets the air really breathe through the engine and get all that fuel out, except for the fuel you just shot in with the, yes. That's what I just said, except for the accelerator pump. That I just said. <laughs> but if you do it fast enough, the engine's still kind of going through, and that, that goes through too. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so all fuel, that, which means, while well, this is being done, no unburnt fuel in the cylinders and no risk of kickback when ignition is turned off. All right. Um, and let me see. We'll put this one. Three. Let's see. Allows mechanic. Because us dumb pilots, we don't know. Um, to check idle mix. And whenever time you pull off the mix, turn it off, look over at the RPM and say, oh, went up about 50. If it goes up more than 50, you're too rich. If it didn't go up 50, then what? It's too lean. Now, if it's too lean, that is not your indication to go out and make it richer because you have to ask yourself, self, if it was set up correctly and it was getting a 50 RPM rise and now it's not, why isn't it? And more often than not, it's because you have a leak somewhere and now it's running lean. So you have to look for the leak. All right, break time. When you say leak, that's like an air leak? That's air leak. leak.